Does the presentation have sound? I use the ding effect a lot. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, it's uh, really nice to be in a room full of uh, people that actually want to hear me talk about Blender. <laughs> I typically, I, uh, I corner a lot of people and I talk ad nauseum to them and uh, usually I get blank stares. So seeing so many friends that I never knew were a part of a community is pretty cool. I'm very new to the Blender community, but I've been using Blender for a long time. Uh, the title of my presentation is I use Blender at Marvel uh, and it changed my life. Oh, I have the notes over here. So, a uh, quick disclaimer. Um, I, um, this presentation is not going to reveal secrets about the inner workings of Marvel or Marvel Studios. I worked in the licensing department in New York. So, no insider information. No spoilers. <laughs> no infinity gauntlet theories. <laughs> This is uh, specifically going to be a presentation about a pilot project that I did in Marvel using Blender that really proved to me that it was ready to be used in companies. So introduction. My name is Thomas Murphy, and I'm a 3D generalist. Uh, I can see this. I am from New York. That's uh, New Amsterdam. Not the old one, the new one. The rent's a little bit about the same. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I live with my wife, Marielle Frank, in an apartment in Brooklyn. Uh, she's a programmer in Python, and she works at Code Academy. She's awesome. I also live with my two cats. That's Ham, and that's Fish. His, his name is spelled funny, but that's because my wife is also a linguist, and she insists on me spelling the name with the phonetic spelling, uh, maybe this will connect with people. I, anyway, moving on. A history of pink and gray. So for me, Blender has always been um, uh, manila colored buttons with pink outlines and uh, just, you know, interesting colored buttons. Uh, around 2002, uh, I downloaded, in the December of 2002, I downloaded my uh, first copy of Blender uh, when I was in college. I was a fine arts major and I just started using it. So this is my second disclaimer. Um, I have been right-clicking since the beginning. Uh, I am, I am, I'm open to left-clicking, so if anyone likes left-clicking, that's cool too. I just, you know. I, I learned the weird way, which is the disclaimer. I learned weird. Uh, I've never taken a 3D course. Uh, I've only recently begun within maybe, okay, so maybe the past four years, I've, as in recent, um, I've begun taking, looking at Blender tutorials and paying attention to the community. I'm old to Blender, but I'm very new to the community, and it's really great to see so many people here. Um, so what did I do at Marvel? Because I think that it's a full house. I get that Marvel bump. Ooh. <laughs> um, I consider myself an artist, and I went to college for fine art. Uh, but I want to draw a point of distinction between um, what I do uh, at companies and versus what art is, because what I did at companies is not exactly art. It, it, it is art. That's kind of unfair. But uh, art can tell everyone a different story. Uh, this is emblematic in the, uh, the Blender Foundation's animation here. And I do branding, which tells everybody the same story. So what's the difference between art and branding? Different story for everybody. It's, it's, it's all based on individual perception. Branding is meant to tell a single narrative that is consistent, that usually inspires, uh, especially in products, uh, confidence in a name brand or confidence in uh, a familiar character or a familiar tune. Those are all good branding techniques. So what was my pilot test at Marvel? Uh, it's a branding sizzle. So a sizzle is basically, a branding sizzle is a trailer for the licensing of a brand. So all the artwork that's created in this sizzle was made by many talented artists that worked in Marvel on the East Coast. And uh, I had the lucky, unique opportunity to take all the art that was created and encapsulate a theme of the brand in a two minute video so that newcomers to the property would um, be able to get up to speed very quickly um, 
and really understand the brand. So typically these are called style guides and they're in booklets. And uh, this was the first time where in Marvel we created a uh, animated version of that booklet to showcase the brand. Uh, so this sizzle was created in Blender uh, internal. This is before Cycles was really popping and it was a little slow and we were using uh, quad core computers and they were Mac, so slow. It, took, it was slow going. Um, so this is the intro. That's the Avengers logo and the Marvel logo, both rendered in Blender. I'm just gonna take a little victory lap and show that one more time. Because <laughs> I'm really proud of that because it was the first time that really showed that you could create something very compelling within a company and no one knew that it was Blender. They all thought that I used some sort of After Effects or Pro Tool and uh, nope, just use Blender. Uh, this is the scene that was, is, and I actually uh, inserted a Suzanne in the background. <laughs> so somewhere sitting in the servers at Marvel is a Suzanne next to the Avengers logo. Um, a lot of people are familiar with the Avengers brand, and you may also notice that that logo I just showed that's animated is not the same as the theatrical logo. Uh, that's because brands are different than the official logos of films. If you look at the top logo, it's black on a dark background, and it, res it, 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 it relies on a, a hit of light behind it to show up. So the first technical challenge when we were making this sizzle um, and this is the logo I animated, was to um, take this designed logo below in silver and make it look theatrical. The logo is silver and it has a different brushed metal treatment on it, and that's so that it'll print properly on different uh, types of apparel, shirts, backgrounds. So it'll look good on a light background or a dark background. And branding, it tells the same story, so it's very consistent. Uh, the top logo would have not worked very well on a black t-shirt. It would have been very dark and faded. So moving on, you're going to see that little city in the background there. And this is the character art for the Avengers style guide uh, that was released prior to the release of the film for the licensing of the brand. In the background, you can see a city. When I first began work at Marvel, I noticed that most of the Marvel characters, they live in New York City. So I said, why don't we make New York City in 3D? And it was pretty much understood that that would be too expensive and time consuming. So I immediately just started doing it. <laughs> and fortuitously, by the time uh, we were ready to make this sizzle. We had lots of different angles of the city to shoot for the style guide. So these are, again, backgrounds that are meant to look painterly uh, and not entirely photorealistic, which the uh, internal renderer was perfect to tackle that. In the foreground, you can see the characters. They moved in with a little bit of motion blur, and they're just images on planes, and you can see the character art. It's not a screen capture of the characters from the film. It's the artwork. It's, De designed in very high fidelity, so it looks really high quality and consistent. And all these characters are on their official poses. So you may notice Thor holding up the hammer and shield, uh, the Captain America's shield right on the foreground there, and Iron Man obviously getting his head out there. So this was actually accomplished thanks to the most advanced add-on at the time, for us anyway, which was importing images as planes. A lot of people that may know, just importing a graphic into Blender was just a pleasure. Before the um, images as planes existed, uh, you'd have to create a material, and then you'd have to set it to Z transparent or ray trace transparent, and then you'd have to set the alpha, na 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 na. So this was really great to make motion graphics for the Avengers branding sizzle, because all of our artwork was already a single graphic. It was simply there to be imported and then played with. So they all move in. This is the portfolio, which is kind of the meat and potatoes of the Avengers uh, style guide. These are character placards that show the official poses of the characters. And here's a use of project from camera UVs right to Captain America with his official poses. And below you can see that little character selector. That's the uh, visual sequence editor. We made that separately. Um, and also we're using track to camera, and there's Hulk in his official poses. And then the uh, lesser characters, 
Black Widow, Nick Fury, and Hawkeye. So this was what I would say a very long, timely render, uh, time-consuming render that uh, really helped me feel comfortable trying ambitious shots for my first use with Blender on a forward-facing project. Again, just more use of planes with characters on the planes. And what's great about Blender is that there was no installation protocol. So you could just take a folder and just drop it onto other people's computers. And I just, I had a USB disk and I went to other designers' computers. I'm like, here you go. And I would put them on their computers and they could just fire up Blender. And without very much knowledge, they would play with the uh, camera and the keyframes and they would just move the camera around and have different shots. So all these shots that just played, right here, oop, right here. So this one shot I rendered while two other designers rendered these shots. Um, so you'll also notice that this is situational art where it's the characters within a background where the CG city was also used. And these are called badges where you combine the character with the branding logo with their own customi customized effect for each Avengers icon. This is um, another large scene that shows all the possible art styles. So there's vector art, there's uh, highly rendered Photoshop art, and then there's groupings. And these are all used for product application and licensing. It's also, also available are patterns and borders. These were also uh, rendered just by a, uh, an intern who happened to be there and he was interested in the project. And he, I said, wanna try? And he just, he, he figured it out in a couple minutes and we had this shot. And this back, some of these backgrounds were actually animated in Flash and then imported in as videos. And that's the Avengers Quinjet and that's the Stark Tower. One interesting thing about our style guides is that we actually create them before the films are released and that sometimes requires us to do a little guesswork in terms of what needs to show up. Uh, so for example, the Quinjet was not fully rendered at this time, so we didn't have a theatrical reference, but what we had was a mesh file provided by Marvel Studios and uh, they sent us over the file and um, I opened it in Maya and immediately exported it to Blender. And um, it was, it was uh, very difficult because the mesh, mesh was very dense and it was almost too much for Blender to handle. So we stripped of it all of its parts. It has really nice bucket seats inside there. We took those out. And this was actually a very limiting project until a, a coworker of mine pointed out, oh, you can just select angles, the faces by angles. So this is uh, an add-on at the time, I think. And, um, or no, this was just, this was in the trunk, but I hadn't, I hadn't been familiar with it and someone had simply Googled it. And so we used it and we were able to project the textures of the painted art that you see right here, right onto the 3D mesh, just using project from camera view, these two painted images. So thank God for uh, motion blur. We also didn't have the Stark Tower. These are concept shots. Um, so to create the Stark Tower, we did a mock-up in Blender. And here it is, and that's the 3D city again in the background, which is a cartoon style approximation of New York for the style guides. There's that motion blur, can't even see the mistakes. And uh, this is just a vignette showing the characters facing off against Loki. And this is the branding section that shows typography, color palette, and proper treatment of the Avengers brand at retail. The technical challenge here was to combine multiple layers using render, Blender internal, and for the first time, I think we used cycles to render some of the highlights, and there's a few flash animations overlaid on the end, because we had some designers that were still familiar with using flash, and so we could layer those in. It was pretty cool. There it is again. And finally, we have guidelines, and this is proper and improper usage of the brand. These were animated in Flash and then imported again into an animated background using Blender. And we didn't have a full shot of the helicarrier, so we used a close-up shot of those characters and then we ended on the Avengers logo. So that was the Avengers branding sizzle. Uh, so Blender 
is for artists, and I'm a living example of why Blender is a wonderful tool for all artists. I never went to a class in 3D up to this point, and I had not, I hadn't really been familiar with any of the workflows. I don't know anything proper. And that kind of exists to this day because I, I've only been watching tutorials and I've been reading up on a lot of uh, CG masters tutorials. So when I first started out, when I was at this point, this was my level of confidence. And you can see just the meteoric rise with no problems whatsoever as I rose from novice to expert. How many people can find that this is a similar experience with Blender? Just show of hands. Mm. Just me, huh? Right, well, I'm gonna show you what peak performance looks like. This was my first render of a 3D character without actually looking at the uh, Blender community and really learning about how to use the software. This is some nightmare fuel for all of you. I was very proud of this. This is, this is fun, but this is not good. Uh, but it, at least it doesn't hold up to a lot of studio standards. It's all tries, there's no quads whatsoever. Um, it's fully rigged, so there's that. And the hair, it's not there. <laughs> so yes, my meteoric rise and confidence in Blender was of course a fallacy. It was the Dunning-Kruger effect. So most of you knew that that was kind of a trick. Everyone that gets into 3D thinks at some point that they can do anything and that they're, they become very confident. And at some point, I know I reached it, I felt, oh, I, I don't know if I can do this, this is way too much. And it, it, it turned me off a little bit because obviously the, the Dunning-Kruger effect simply is uh, was a Dave Dunning and, um, oops, I lost, I forgot his first name. Uh, Kruger, Dunning-Kruger, former Nobel laureates, uh, psycho psychologist that they pointed out that um, essentially human beings, we as a biomass, tend to overestimate our skills in any field. We think we're a little bit better than we actually are when, when in fact we really aren't. So we kind of overestimate our skills, therefore the less we know, the more confident we are. So um, right now I'm pretty much at the very bottom of that. So that's currently where I am. And then the Blender community sharing made all of my artwork better. And I saw things that were, people were creating and everyone was sharing all their artwork. I'm good on time, good. They were sharing their artwork and I didn't feel a lost and alone anymore and I felt like I had a helping hand. And it got me thinking, why does Blender have so much more out there for me to see and why was it so helpful for me? Everything I've learned, I felt like a discovery rather than arcane knowledge that was being fed to me because I could just go on the web and I would figure it out or I'd figure it out myself and Blender really allowed me to own it. And I was more excited to share what I had learned with others because, well, Blender was free. I didn't have to pay a license fee, so I didn't feel like I needed to keep this knowledge to myself. I was proud of it. And that's, to me, what makes Blender so special. Um, it's not enterprise software. Enterprise software, specifically in 3D, which is a very complicated and deep dive, has a, a lot of barriers to entry. Prohibitive licensing fees, expensive training and certifications, operation system restrictions, like 3D Studio Max not running on Max. Uh, file compatibility, reverse compatibility issues, uh, purchasing bottlenecks in companies, tricky licensing, so uh, some people know that the education versions of uh, Autodesk, don't entire, you don't entirely own those files that you create. And there's also weird registration and licensing requirements. For instance, there's subscription models now, like Marvelous Designer. And while enterprise software is really wonderful, and they really, they do great things, they get you stuck into a trap. And I've noticed this personally working in my career, talking to other 3D artists that are reticent to change, that have learned 3D. Um, and it's the sunken cost fallacy. They've spent a lot of time training and learning a specific software, and that prevents them from ever leaving that software, and they, they get tracked into a, a narrow, a narrowing of their career, or they're not familiar with the entire landscape of 3D, and Blender does not have this, because Blender is just free and all the information is out there. It just dares you to try, and you open it up, and it works great, sometimes. 
Uh, <laughs> in the field of 3D, which is constantly evolving, reluctance to change uh, kind of inhibits a learner's growth and a lot of people get stuck in their ways. That's kind of what happens is they chase recoupment, which is they want to learn a software and then they want to use it professionally. So they're, they're attempting to recover the time and money, money that they expended by using the software. So they want to get the most out of their investment. Um, the problem is the more you have to invest in something, the harder it becomes to abandon. And we've all kind of experienced this sunk cost fallacy. Uh, more recently for me, I saw this movie. I really appreciate it for the 3D, but I, I purchased a ticket and then I thought, well, I might as well see it. I probably shouldn't have. Another one. I have been watching this for a long time. I am sure if I keep watching it, I will get some answers. <laughs> Spoilers. So after that, I got better. Uh, and I got into some ca character animation. I left Marvel because a startup discovered me and they needed a guy that knew Blender. So I learned how to program and make a few plugins for a company. Uh, I've signed a lot of NDA, so it's just a company. And I obviously did animation for them. After I worked at a startup, I worked at a textile company where I became more ambitious. These are all created in Blender and entirely by me. Uh, I became a kind of a one-man shop. This is for the Finding Dory, so we were selling pillows and Finding Dory pillow. These would go into branding sizzles and presentation decks. This is familiar brand. This is some visual flair that would go into a presentation visual pitch deck. Angry Birds 2 or 3, I forget which one. Oh, no, this is uh, Stella. So this is a more visualization of a retail environment and a good use of the renderer, internal renderer for a uh, blender. The same thing, but for hooded towels and character animation. This is Blaze, which is uh, Nickelodeon, I think, yes. So visual sequence editor combined with some fun motion graphics, all using Blender. Then I got interested in product design because I met a lot of product developers there. So I helped make a product uh, from concept to completion, and then there was a trailer made. This is the Red Rooster Rocket, I think. It's on Amazon, so there you go. And Oops. that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. For, I forgot to turn the music off on that one. Uh, afterwards, I started doing pitch decks for Women's Wear Daily and for summits just like this. So all very clever uses of just the images with planes. It's pretty simple. Nothing too complicated, but it gets the job done. Blank slide. Oh, it's the same thing. Uh, more recently, I worked on a commercial for the uh, same, the textile company. This is actually formatted incorrectly, so it's close up, but that's okay, it's for Target. And it's my Blender work has been sh shown on uh, Jumbotrons in Times Square, just using a simple cloth effects with the internal renderer. And that's over by the Joffrey Tron, which is Toys R Us in New York if you ever go there, though I think they may have gone out of business now. But I think they're back in there. So that's very simple use. This, it's very effective. For motion graphics, it's ideal. Since then, I've gotten a lot better at modeling and using more standard modeling techniques. These are game assets that I'm creating. Since my last company, I've actually left work. I work um, freelance now, and I do Blender full-time. I am creating a video game using Blender. Uh, it's called The Shadows Lengthen. I'm, for the first time, collaborating with other people online. So these are other artists, models, and musicians that I uh, coordinate with on Twitter and I pay them for their services and they help me create the game. So this is the uh, title card for the game. Or the logo. I think the audio got cut out there, but there was audio. So students and professionals ask me, what 3D program should I learn? 
and I've always had the same answer, Blender. Notice the good branding, the Blender, the Blender logo. Um, I had a rare experience to use Blender in Marvel, and that gave me a lot of confidence to know that Blender can be used in a, in a company. Blender, uh, Marvel, is a well-known brand, and when I was working there, I got a lot of positive feedback, and a lot of people were very impressed at the results. So I was given a confidence that a lot of people may not have, and I want to let everyone that uses Blender know you can definitely use this as a tool in most industries. I can't think of one. Um, ne Next Gen probably pretty much convinced that us that this morning, but I also want to know that if I want people to know that if you're a designer or you don't think you can do 3D, Blender is going to support you, and it's going to be one of the best choices you can make. Um, it is a great decision to make if you want to be an artist, not working in branding. I've worked as a two designer, working on branding, telling the same story over and over again. And with Blender, you can create your own story. Thank you all for listening to mine.